Hey, Lindsay's back this week with another painting that you can do. Plus, she uses a couple of cool techniques I think you'll want to try on your own artwork. Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today on Home and Garden for Mere Mortals, I'm going to show you how to create this fall-themed artwork. It's a lot of fun. We're going to use acrylic paints. You're probably already uh, familiar with working with those. Plus, we're going to incorporate a few new tools, such as stencil and contact paper, to create this fun artwork. You can make a series of these to hang in your house this fall, or even change it up with other motifs to suit different seasons. Let's go to the table, and I'll show you how it's done. Today we're going to be using acrylic paint. The brand I'm using is Turner Acryl Gouache, which basically is an acrylic paint with a matte finish. I think it's really pretty for uh, home decor projects because you don't have any shiny spots when you're, uh, when you're painting. Everything just has a lovely dull sheen. So what I'm doing here is just squeezing out a few different colors all over my canvas. That way I don't have to dirty a palette. And then I'm just spreading it around with a stiff, firm brush. I like working light to dark so that my colors stay nice and bright. I did some yellow and red and realized that I needed something to add a little interest, so I'm going in with some nice permanent green light, which is a springy green, and I'm filling in some of the blank spots with that. While the background was drying, I cut out a bunch of maple leaf shapes out of some regular old contact paper. You can trace leaves from your front yard, or you can actually cut them out with a die cutter if you have that sort of machine. Either way, it's going to look fantastic. I cut out a bunch of shapes in different sizes and then stuck them over the canvas as soon as it was dry. I decided to make a sweeping uh, motif of leaves that start large in the lower right hand corner and get smaller as they work their way up to the upper left hand corner. You can rearrange your leaves until you have just the right arrangement. The great thing about contact paper is that it's not too sticky so you can keep moving it until you get it just right. Now I'm taking some black paint and I'm adding a few dabs on the canvas, not on top of the leaves though, and I'm using a brayer to brayer out the paint. The reason I'm using a brayer as opposed to a brush is because it's going to give me a more organic, looser, a choppier look. I want some of that um, bright background foliage color to show through even on spots that aren't the leaves. It just uh, keeps me from getting too fussy or picky with it. So once you've rolled out all that black paint, you're going to want to let it dry before you remove your leaves. Since I want my leaves to be really bright and colorful, I'm going to leave my maple leaf contact paper stickers on during the entire stenciling process. So what I'm using here is a large paper scrapbooking stencil, and I've just laid it on top of the black paint, which is mostly dry. I put a little bit of pearlescent acrylic paint, it's also the Turner Aquil gouache, onto a little ceramic tile and I'm rolling that over the stencil. I like this technique because A, um, I can use the same roller I used for the black, I just wiped it off after I was done with the black, and um, B, because it gives me a less solid color, so if I wanted to have it a little bit more um, choppy, I could. Now I am taking a regular paintbrush and dragging some of that paint around to the edges of the stencil because you can see kind of a big halo around the shattered shapes. It totally is up to you how much of that you want to do. It depends on how um, solid of an image you want. Now you can simply move your stencil to another section of the canvas and repeat that process. You could cover the entire background, but I want to have some of the uh, choppy black uh, showing through on its own without a stencil on top. So I'm just going to move it over here once and repeat that process. I wanted to mention that I'm using several different shades of pearlized paint here for the stenciling. I like that because on top of black, metallic and pearl paint looks fantastic. It just really makes the colors shine and pop and give you that beautiful kind of special effect holographic look. So here I am using a, um, a pearl purple color in another smaller scale abstract stencil to kind of overlap the other stenciling that I did and kind of fade that into the background. I'm going to put that down one more time, add a little more stenciling and then it'll be time to reveal our masks. Here's a fun fact. The difference between a stencil and a mask is basically if you have the innie or the outie of an image. These maple leaf stickers are technically masks because they cover up the positive image, whereas a stencil covers up the negative image and you stencil in the positive part. The mask covers up the positive area and you stencil around the negative area. So if you ever wanted to know the difference, they basically do the same purpose, but they just cover up a different part of your design. What I'm 
I'm doing here is using a, a palette knife. You could also use a pin or a spatula or a edge of a credit card, anything you have that's kind of thin and uh, pointy. And I am lifting up part of the contact paper sticker that we made and gently peeling it off because I'm taking these masks off before all the stenciling is completely dry. I was kind of worried that if I let it dry and cure completely that the um, acrylic paint film might actually um, bond and I might tear some of the paint when I pulled it off. So I like to um, take off the uh, the masks just as the paint is dry to the touch, but I want to be very careful because I don't want to scrape or um, or dent the acrylic paint before it's fully, uh, fully cured. And once you have all of these masks off, you can admire your beautiful artwork. Now this is going to have an uniform dull sheen because I am using Turner Aquil gouache. Um, which all the paint that line is going to have a uniform sheen. But if you're using a variety of different paints, because that's what you have around your house, you'll notice that there'll be different spots with different levels of shininess to it. And you might want to give it a varnish to unify all of those, um, all of those different levels of shine. Plus, it's always a great idea to varnish your paintings just to protect it and be able to clean it without worrying about damaging your paint film. I hope you enjoyed this video today. I sure enjoyed making it for you, and I hope you find some time to make something creative today. If you would like more free, fun painting tutorials, please check out my channel, The Frugal Crafter. I post videos several times a week, and there are painting and crafting for beginners to advanced artists, and uh, I'd love to have you come on by and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this painting tutorial on Home and Garden for Mere Mortals, and I hope you check out the other videos on this channel as well. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy crafting!